All right, hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm gonna to be going over how to create this lens dust effect. Now I posted a video a couple of days ago now, which I had kind of a field with some grass and some a tree and like some beds, a bed in the middle of the field. And it, and it had this kind of effect with lens dust and kind of almost lens flare-ish kind of thing coming over the screen when you look at the sun. Um, so I thought some people might be interested on how to do that. So you can go ahead and look at the video here if you like, or we can continue in, on with this tutorial. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right. So here's my starter scene, which I have right here. Now you can go ahead and download that in the, the description, or there'll be an annotation on screen right here, which you can go ahead and download from. But now that we've got all of that out of the way, there is no need to have this scene, by the way. Um, it just helps it for some people that might be a bit more beginner and kind of just want to see this effect. And they want it, everything the same so they can follow it exactly. But there's no need because this is going to basically work with whatever scene you like. It's just going to need to be GLSL. So now that we have that set up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go... Um, Select the camera, and we're going to go S, Shift S, cursor selection, and we're going to add a plane, and we're going to go ahead and rotate that. And move that up. We're going to go ahead and scale this down. Oh, and we're going to scale this along, kind of scale this up, just getting it until it's at a useful position. Alright, so this is going to be in front of the camera because it's going to be. You could say it's post-processing layer since Blender doesn't have like a useful node way of doing it. You can do it with 2D filters, but that's annoying. So we are doing it with uh, kind of more of a real life way, I guess you could say. It's not real life, but it's like if you were going to try and do something like this in real life, you'd probably have to put a layer in front of the camera. So I don't know, I don't know where I was going with saying that. But anyway, we just, we're just putting a plane in front of this since Blender has not got the features yet to do it with nodes, um, post person with nodes. So we're going to do it with just adding a plane on here so we can do it with nodes. So we're going to go ahead and select a plane and select the camera. We're going to go control P, parent to object. So now it's parented to the camera. Look at all that. That's amazing. Anyway, now that that's set up, we're going to go ahead and select our plane and we're going to go new material. We're going to get rid of a specular and that's not even important. I don't know why I did that. It's just something I always do. Anyway, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and click this. And what that's going to do is it's going to enable it to a node material. So we can use nodes to do this material, which allows us to do a lot more advanced stuff. So what you'll see here is we have our different options. And the main one we want to look at is render pipeline options. So if we enable transparency, it's on C transparency. What you'll see now is not much. So this just allows us to have transparency within the um, nodes. And you just got this is how you enable it if you do click the nodes. Because you can see there's no transparency thing other than this. So you just want to enable that there. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and pull this out. And we're going to go ahead and go node editor. And I'm going to make this a bit smaller. Alright, so now that we have that, what we want to go ahead and do is, first of all, in our node group, we want to create a kind of a mask. So, when we look at this um, lamp, we want the lens dust to show up, but when we're not looking at any type of lamp or a light source, we don't want it to show up. So, the useful thing we can do is we can just use a normal material to detect what the lights are, and... Therefore, we can use that as a mask with a little bit of edits. So we're going to go ahead and create a new material here. And this is not really important. We're just going to disable specular. And I mean, this is important, but this material is kind of just needs to be there so this will work. So you just might want to just, this is kind of a rubbish material, you could say. It's just a mask material. So you don't need to worry about it. It's kind of just going to be there. So I'm going to mask. Anyway. Let's go ahead and do some more stuff. So, what you'll see here is if we play and change this to alpha down a bit, what you'll see is when we look at this lamp, why is the light not showing up? 
Uh, well, it is. Um, let's go ahead and just change back facing off so you can see. It is shine up. Um, but the thing is, it's a two-sided face, which is very useful. So on one side, it's going to have the color from the first side. On the other side, it's going to have this color. So that's the noise. And when I first did, I was doing random things with these normals. I'm like, oh, hook all this stuff up. And then I suddenly realized there was invert normals button. I was just like, oh, that's so useful. It was so annoying, though, because I set up big complex things trying to get this to work and I was changing these values and stuff and then I just realized there's this button and what this does is it will invert the normal so the light that comes from this side is showing up on this side which we want because the side is going to be the one pointing at the camera side is going to be the one pointing at the camera I'm sure this has a lot more uses for other stuff as well I cannot think of them now but it's a useful feature so let's go ahead and come back so what are we trying to do so now if we go to camera and play and look at this you can see it's getting color from that it's getting color from that it's getting color from that i assume that one's red and as you can see we're not looking at things so that's not showing up there we get the color from this one and everything's working fine so i don't know what's going on with this i get this every so often i'm going to go ahead and just go control a apply scale um as you, you could see up the top it had some problems with the corners i'm not quite sure what's with that so as you can see down the bottom as well so you might just want to scale that up. So now it's working. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, wait. Oh, all right. So we're going to actually just need to bring this into the camera so it doesn't ever clip it through anything. So now, now, hopefully, that, that will help as well. So... You're going to need to have this in the back of the camera so it doesn't clip through anything. So in the middle, it's just basically when there's nothing going to be clipping through it. Because that's what we want. So if you also have a camera, uh, a, a, like a cube or something around this. Um, so this is your player model. And obviously you're going to have a player model or box or something. What you're going to want to go ahead and do is if you have shadows in your game. You're just going to, you know, cast shadow buffer off and stuff like that. Or else it's going to mess with this. So that's just a thing to note you're gonna to need to turn off shadows Is it? i think it's received down here you turn off receive and you won't receive shadows which could be a problem anyway now that we have that set up what we can go ahead and do is you can see we can look around all right so now that we have that set up what are we doing all right so we're going to switch this into a mask so that it works a bit better so we're going to add a color ramp and we're going to kind of convert this into kind of what we want. So we can just go ahead with color ramp and move these in a bit. So as you see, when we come close to it, um, that one's not showing up because I believe it's too far away. So this is going to cull down the distance you can see them from. So it's going to be a trade-off, kind of what you want. Um, there we go got that problem down there as well so let's scale that up all right so now you can see it's showing up quickly i don't know what's going on over there but anyway let's go ahead and change this main color to a kind of a darker color so that we don't have fully the color coming through because we don't want the texture 100 percent there or else it just doesn't look that nice so now that we have our basic mask working we can go ahead and switch that to normal Let's go ahead and create a texture or a dust texture for this. Now you can go ahead and make your own or get one from some website or something like that. In my case, I'm just going to make my own. All right, so we are here in GIMP. And I'm going to create a new texture. And this is going to be fine. And this is going to be a... This is going to be a black and white image. So what you could go ahead and do is if you wanted color, you could also do that. So you could have color on your image and then you could add that on as well. But I'm just going to use a black and white one here, which will be fine for what I want. So as you can see, we can click around. Um, now you can just GIMP, Photoshop, whatever you like. Just basically look, got to create a 
texture which will work as a uh, kind of a dust on your lens or whatever All right so let's go ahead and kind of just create a basic effect so I'm gonna get some dust on here maybe change turn this down I don't want this 100% showing up too much um, maybe no, those don't, those don't look really nice. They're nice. All right, so this is going to be a pretty hectic camera. Someone's been putting their fingers all over the lens or something. Ooh, I like that brush. Anyway, I kind of just want to get a effect like that. And then I like, in my one, I did kind of a around the edges. I did a kind of a yucky like someone been seriously touching the side of the camera and just absolutely making the lens look disgusting so that's kind of that'll be fine uh, it might be a bit too much but anyway we can probably change it down and blend so we're going to go ahead and export as um so i'm just going to export it to my texture file you can export it to your desktop whatever you like and I'm going to go ahead and this is going to be our text and and it's got tapped so it's texture for our tutorial so I can easily find it and then we're going to go ahead and this can be a PNG or a JPEG in my case I'm going to go JPEG because why not we don't JPEG what is that? Is that, how you, is that JPEG? I'm always forgetting the file formats. <laughs> anyway, so now because we don't need the alpha in it, because if you did have alpha and color information, you could export uh, PNG, but this should be fine with me, so I can go export. Um, JPEGs don't export as nice, do they? Anyway, no big deal. Oh, wrong file. So now that we've got that, we can go ahead and go input geometry. And then we can go input texture. Oh, input texture. And we want to go ahead and connect that up. All right, so we're going to go ahead and connect this right into here so we can see everything working. Now, I forget if I unwrapped this or not. I don't think I did. So we're going to go ahead and move this up. And we're going to go to UV Image Editor. And we're just going to go U Reset. Um, now, this might need to be rotated or something. Uh, we'll see what happens later on. But we can go ahead and come to our material. We can come to a texture. We can go new, open. We're going to go to the texture folder or wherever you save in your case. And you're going to go ahead and find this. So I'm going to go ahead and say text. So here we go. This is the one I just exported. This is one for another tutorial. But let's go ahead and go open. And now that we have that, we, what you'll see is we can go ahead and open it from here. And what we're going to go ahead and do is just remove it from this material because it's going to mess everything up if it shows up there. And there we go. Ooh, that's really quite a lot. So one thing to note for anyone that's using PNG and they also want to have color information, you can just use this value because this value is actually the alpha. I don't know why they call it value. It'd be a lot better if they call it alpha but that's what they call it so anyway what we're going to go ahead and do is we should be able to add a color mix rgb and i'm just going to check this is still working because sometimes when you do that it doesn't work so if i was to still have this texture on the material here i am pretty sure it messed it up yes as you can see it's messing it up i don't, I don't know why that happens but it, it does so you want to make sure that, that is not happening so that texture is not on there, or any texture on there, I don't think. Now we've got that all working. So now that everything's working, we can go ahead and plug these in. And this is going to go into the factor. And this is going to plug in here, and this is going to be black. So nothing's happening, so we want to move this to the bottom slot, and change this to black. So now what you'll see is only when we look at a white will these show up um, 
So as you see, only when we look at a light, it does it show up. So what we can go ahead and do now is plug this into the alpha slot. And everything should work fine. I am not sure why this is not showing up. All right, so it is showing up. It's very dull, as you can see. So in my case, I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this up. Depends what you want. I kind of want this for tutorial, so I want it to be quite easy to see. But as you can see there, it's working. So one extra thing you can do is if you want to give this this just a little bit of extra thing, you just plug this into the color. Boom. Now, it's really hard to see with this texture. Um, maybe I can kind of move this around so you can see it better. Um, it's taking on the color. I'm not sure what's with this one. I think it's got something wrong with the color. Um, it doesn't work with that one. Maybe it's too far away because this does have distance. So you're going to want to play with this value depending on the distance and the colors and so on. But anyway, as you can see, it's taking on the colors of the object. Maybe you want a bit more of a tense one or something like that. Let's go ahead and turn this down though. So basically, whenever it gets close, this is going to be the max color it will go to. So if we were to bring one of these really close to the camera, let's just go shift yes and add a lamp. As you can see, it's really showing up here. So that if you want to change the max color it can get to, just change this down. So there we go. So there is the basic effect. Now, if you wanted to go a little bit step, oh, it is, it is step, yeah. if you want to go a step further, um, this doesn't look always look the best, and it's really hard to turn down. But you can do this if you want it. You can go ahead and have kind of the effect I had in my one, where you get this big kind of glowing effect. And the way we can do that, ooh, <laughs> is we can go ahead and just. I'm going to duplicate this so I can independently view this. Oh, grab this. It's 100%. And let's duplicate this. Grab the cut main color out of here. And we're going to connect this up. So now, you can see we're just getting color out of that material. And we want this to be white. Now when we look away and get closer, it kind of shows up. Let's maybe turn this down. To get a really nice effect, it can be hard though. Um, all right, so what we can go ahead and do now is we can go ahead and go grab this and just, I just put a line there. You can just go shift and then drag and it's gonna put lines here. It's just easier way to lay it out. So we're gonna go color, mix, RGB mix and we're gonna connect this up. We're gonna see this to add. And this is going to be on here. So I have no idea what's going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and use this as a debugger. The second one. So the one you clicked on is going to be the one it uses. So I'm not sure why this is not working. So let's go ahead and just change this to full or color. Ah, so it is working, it just needed more color. So as you can see, depending on the distance, they're going to get more and more light. So you're really going to want to change this to what you want and change this color and move this around. Kind of to what you want, but it's kind of up to you. But here is the effect. I think it actually works quite nice. It gives you that, if you really want a dreamy kind of effect, this is one to go for. Um, if you really wanted to do something amazing, you need to learn GLSL programming. But for something just with notes, I think this is, this is pretty okay. So there we go. That is it. Um, uh, if you have any questions, comment them down below. I'd love to know or any opinions on how I could make this better. Also comment those down below. Or any, you know, any suggestions on making this a bit better so it actually works better. That also. So if you want to see more tutorials like this and tutorials on other subjects, you can subscribe because I come out with a new tutorial every single week on a different subject in the Blender game engine. So have a great week, keep blending, and keep using the Blender game engine because it's a really powerful engine and I really want to see what people can do with it. So have a great week.